from the Gulf Coast of Florida at Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa. Just a short time ago, the Buccaneers emerging from their tunnel to the roar of this frenzied crowd here in the Sunshine State. And we're in the big ship, and fittingly, everyone here ready to do battle as Tampa Bay gets ready to match up with the Pittsburgh Steelers. First down, Fitzpatrick throwing the out route incomplete. That's Evans. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. They lost two there, and it's third down. Stephon Tuitt came out at Notre Dame as another one of those really tall defensive ends, and you just wonder, would they be able to have the leverage to bend and make plays? I think he just gave us an answer with that tackle. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. From the gun, Fitzpatrick. And he's got a man. It's the tight end, Howard, complete. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. And they'll go with the ground attack here. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. It's Big Vince Williams who made the tackle. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. Now Fitzpatrick. And he's got the hook up here to Deshaun Jackson. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, 22. I have no crystal ball up here. I can't truly see into the future. But if they don't start getting some pressure on him, make him move around a little bit and do something with the receivers to you know, change up their timing, they're going to get shredded, as we've seen so far. Right now, they're off to a blazing start. Yeah, and you are right. He looks way too comfortable back there in the pocket. Yeah, there shouldn't be a pillow back there for him, all right? <laughs> if, as, as a defensive guy, they've got to dump him on his backside a few times, shake things up. Yeah, they're going to need an in-drive adjustment here on this first series. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sideline thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. It's a loss of two. Now third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Three down, three down. Hey! Hey! Off the play fake here, Fitzpatrick. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And it's incomplete, almost intercepted. He had a great shot of picking that off in the end zone. It brings up fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And Catanzaro's kick is right through. 
And the Bucks take a 3-0 lead. So our initial drive of the night ends in three points. Maybe not exactly what this home crowd wanted, but they'll take the early lead. They will take it. You're exactly right. Everybody wants a touchdown. But in this case, good opening drive, put points on the board, and a lot of coaches do believe the first team to score in the game, statistically, often ends up the winner. Now after the made field goal, Catton Zero to boot this one away on the kickoff. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Well, for Pittsburgh, as they come back out here, it's not going to get much easier than the week one tie against Cleveland. Kansas City next week, and then they have Tampa Bay, but then Baltimore and Atlanta the following weeks. Listen, if you're a defensive back, a secondary player, you better get your rest this week because Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill, they're going to test you downfield. And that game with Tampa Bay looked like a gimme. No longer a gimme after what Tampa did against New Orleans. And then, who's that in the fourth game? The Ravens. The Ravens. <laughs> Renewing that rivalry once again. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. 25 yards, the pick up there, and also a first down. Dance class, anyone? <laughs> Did you see the steps between the quarterback and the running That's back what you on need that counter for a good play? Counter. You have to have it because you're setting up your blocking. There's a timing element as well, but they have to marry up their steps. Otherwise, that timing gets thrown out the window. The timing was great there at a big run. Over the middle here to Brown. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. He finds some open field here. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. Last week it was Connor filling in for Le'Veon Bell, and he did more than just fill in. He was good. 31 carries, 135 yards, two touchdowns on the ground, 57 yards receiving as well. You and I talked about this in preseason. He looked like he was back to being the best James Connor we saw at Pittsburgh before he got sick with cancer leukemia. He's back in full form now, and he played a great season opener. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses, because when you can have that type of a gain in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways, because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opens things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. Defense able to get there. Swarm to the football. Zilch, zero, nada there for the offense, Charles. Yeah, it really was an example of good team defense, wasn't it? Everyone handled their responsibilities, and they held them to no gain. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Showed off the toughness, but still corralled shy of the five at the six. He's able to rattle off six on the carry, and that'll get him to third and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Roethlisberger to throw. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. A flip to the kicker. He's going to try to run for it. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. 
I actually like the fake, all right? It gave it a shot. This is one of those plays where you really think you're going to fool people because he shoveled it off to the kicker, and he was going to try and get it running. <laughs> we have seen it be successful before, but definitely not on this play. Yeah, I was going to say, as the kicker, when you see that it's probably not going to work, hey! Just terror and panic in your eyes, I would imagine. What we really needed there was the close-up of his face in, while yeah. he was running. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he'll go down after losing yardage at the 10. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. They run a draw here on second down. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. There to stop him, Terrell Edmonds. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. On third down, Fitzpatrick. And that's complete. It's Watson. And he'll be taken down just shy of the 40. A big third down conversion with a gain of 28. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around to make a play on the football. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Fitzpatrick now on second down. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. 15 yards through the air on a first down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. Yeah, you got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Here's Fitzpatrick. Jackson's got it over the middle. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. Works his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Now a second down throw for Fitzpatrick. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. T.J. Watt in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. This Pittsburgh defense always keeping the offensive line on their toes, or I guess on their heels and back. They are certainly about pressure, aren't they? At 56 sacks as a unit in 2017, which led the NFL, they certainly live up to their nickname, which is Blitzburg. Third and long for Ryan Fitzpatrick. 
He's going to let this go deep for Jackson. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. Well, not that we had any questions, but it's obvious his arm does not hurt today, does it? He does not mind slinging it around. He is firing that pigskin around the yard. Yeah, putting it deep downfield, taking shots. Unsuccessful there, but I like his moxie. no good off to the right and this score will stay right where it is everything looked good good snap good hold sometimes though the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it and this one winds up no good good starting field position for them here as they come up first and ten the drive will start with Connor just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They run with Connor. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. Only a yard on the pickup, and now they've got a third down and eight. Some of these play calls, I think they're a little conservative, but you know me because it's easy to sit up in this booth, right, and make all the calls and, and think I'm going to be correct. But I would like to see them open things up because otherwise this defense is going to gang up on the run and shut them down. On third down, Roethlisberger, and he finds McDonald. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work. And that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Connor. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and now they're looking at a third and 13. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Now Ben on third and long. And this is going to be incomplete. It's never a bad idea to try and get it to Antonio Brown, but it must be a little bit of the Madden curse going on for our cover athlete here. Hasn't been able to get that elite separation that we're used to seeing from him. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. Adam Humphreys deep to return. So out come the Bucks now. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Yeah, get a little time? closer. Yeah, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, Less of a field goal attempt for him. And he'll get this one up to about his 14. T.J. Watt in on the tackle. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Second down, Fitzpatrick. He's going to air one out. 
So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. The Bucks on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and eight. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. He hits Rodgers in the flat. 12 yards there as they move the chains. And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. But anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen because he heads towards the flat first, oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down. And they'll run it here. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Looking to throw on second down. Fitzpatrick, his throw incomplete. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for, and it's third down. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. The Bucks on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Working out of the gun, Fitzpatrick. And an alley to run. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one good for 15 and a first. Play action here on first down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Well, we got a second here to look back to week one. A handful of nice road wins. The biggest surprise, no doubt, CD. How about Tampa Bay winning at New Orleans? Yeah, that was a big one because I'm not sure how many people really expected that. We looked at the schedule in preseason and thought, oh, my God, for Tampa. At New Orleans, at home for Philadelphia, home for Pittsburgh. I figured an 0-3 start. If they won one of them, it would be great. Well, they got it on Sunday, winning at New Orleans. Washington at Arizona, Cincinnati at Indianapolis, Kansas City at the Chargers. All of them had big wins in week one. But didn't you think Chicago was going to pull it oh, out? Oh, that was going to be a stunner. And if Chicago and the Saints had won, some elimination pools wouldn't have had many people left. Yeah, but Aaron Rodgers showed up, and poor Chicago went home with an L. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Three down, three down. Ready! Ready! From the gun, Fitzpatrick. Short for his running back, and he's got him complete. It's a four-yard pickup, and it'll be fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the Steeler offense now, ready to see what they can do here. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? They start with a give to Connor. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Set! 
Here's Connor. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Now it's Connor. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Three yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And they'll go on the ground. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll be a loss of a yard, and just like that, it's third down. But well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. And definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. A first down throw for Fitzpatrick. Over the middle complete. It's Jackson. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. This quarterback now, 10 of 16, throwing the football. It's first and 10. Fitzpatrick now to throw on first down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. T.J. Watt coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. Throwing on third and long. Fitzpatrick. Open man has got to it. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. They don't even need to be a breakdown. Just, I, they move, and they know it affects the defense, because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary, and I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open, probably because of his movement out of the pocket. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Ready! 
And they'll go with a ground attack here. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll be a second and long. To throw on second down. Fitzpatrick, right side caught by Jackson. And he'll get it down here to the 43. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. On third down, Fitzpatrick. And he's going to be hit and taken down. Back right around the 48-yard line. Now the Steelers put a stop to the action with a timeout defensively as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Brian Anger now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And the Steelers set to take the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Now Roethlisberger and McDonald here over the middle. The 40, the 30, past the 20, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Vance McDonald, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Steelers get the quick strike touchdown. There we go, there we go, there we go. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. Extra point put through by Boswell. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. Boswell on now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Hey! Move for it, five. Fitzpatrick on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Well, quite a few teams this past week in the NFL were playing with new quarterbacks, guys that have been in the league, but in a new uniform. And they had quite a bit of success. You noted some of them. Who'd you have down? It was really incredible success when you think about it. Kirk Cousins in Minnesota won. Case Keenum in Denver won. Alex Smith with Washington won at Arizona. Pat Mahomes, he started one game last year. But it was really a throwaway. His true debut on the road against the Chargers wins. And Tyrod, Tyrod, whichever way he wants it pronounced, got a tie with Cleveland. How about special category? 
Brian Tannehill back with the Dolphins. He wins in their home game against Tennessee. And fear the beard. Ryan Fitzpatrick, <laughs> what a monster performance on the road, beating New Orleans with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And if you guys were worried, Brady and Rodgers, still pretty good. Yes. The Bucks on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This is third and seven. Now Fitzpatrick. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. First and ten, Fitzpatrick. Throw left side complete. That's Rodgers. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because <laughs> Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Throwing again, Fitzpatrick, and that is incomplete, stopping the clock with five seconds to go. The intended receiver that time, Adam Humphreys, at its third down. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as he'll try to get three before half. This just a 35-yard attempt from the left hash. And Captain Zero's kick is right through. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. So they're still down, but they are able to salvage three here heading into the lockers. This is what you work on from the beginning of training camp. Heading into the half, put some points on the board. No matter what the score says at that point, you've accomplished what you set out to do. Now after the made field goal, Catton Zero to boot this one away on the kickoff. On the return is Juju Smith-Schuster. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Steelers out in front. As we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, it's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Smith-Schuster now to return. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies, try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's we'll see if they do just that. He takes this from the 30 to the 34. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. On 
on second down, Roethlisberger. Man open left side is Brown. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Roethlisberger hooking up with Brown to get the Steelers a first. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Let's go, let's go, let's go. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. Going right side here, and that's complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. They stay on the ground. Here's Connor again. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Tackle made by Chris Conti. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. This one complete right side to McDonald. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get into that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker board? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Set, set. Move 45. Move 45. To throw again, Fitzpatrick. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. It's a gain of nine yards. And that'll make it third and one. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Flush to his right, eight yards that time, able to take off, and the result is a first down. Now that definitely hurts because the mindset is getting a three and out there and they don't get it done. They give up the scramble and a pickup for a first down. Now a play fake here on first down. He's gonna loft one deep left side here. And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. 
this defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. The best offenses and the ones that win are ones that make adjustments. And right now, I think this team needs to open things up. The Bucks on third down. Now they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This is third and 11. From the gun, Fitzpatrick. And some room to work. And he slides to avoid the hit. A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half. And that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse. And I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. On third down, Fitzpatrick. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. Nine yards on the play and a first down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Big play coming up. Here's third and 10. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Well contained there defensively. The screen gets only a yard at its fourth. They dialed up the screen pass on third down. And for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together. And they had a chance to pick up a first down. But the defense got there and finished it off. And Catanzaro's kick is right through. And they jump back in front here. It's 9-7. to seven. All nine points for him coming via the field goal. And this last one puts him out in front. All the field goals are great. But you know I'm going to get pessimistic here, right? Because you've got to score touchdowns to win games in the NFL. I just wonder if all these field goals, great now, or if they'll come back and haunt them later on. Now after the made field goal, Cat and Zero to boot this one away on the kickoff. Smith-Schuster now to return. 
And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And I hate to point to that missed field goal from their last drive, but you look at the scoreboard, they would be in the lead if they had that three. Well, no doubt those points or those missed points do loom large, but here they're getting a chance for a makeup, aren't they? Almost like my time in school, I was always begging my teachers for a makeup exam. Here's their opportunity now to put those points on the board. And every point becoming more vital here in the second half. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Uh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. On second down, here's Roethlisberger. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Brown. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. <laughs> Roethlisberger now off the bootleg. Throw left side complete. That's James. A good pick up there, 22. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Roethlisberger now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And a short game down to about the 33. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Gerald McCoy is always going to be linked with Indomitian Sue. They came into the NFL in the same draft class. There was a lot of debate about who was going to be the better defensive tackle. They just do it two different ways. McCoy, more movement, more elusiveness. That allowed him to make the play there for a short game. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. He'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. now in Tampa. It's been a good one so far. Just a two-point game here as we get set for quarter number four. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. And a tackle there by Quan Alexander. But that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Again, it's Connor. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. And the Steelers on third down, just one for five to this point. This is third and four. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. A great play there. A 15-yard touchdown run. And the Steelers have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. In as many coaches' meetings as we sit in, we hear the word finish all the time, don't we? And on that play, the back actually finished getting into the end zone, breaking the last tackle. Tried to wrap up, tried to use the proper technique, just wasn't able to get it done. Boswell good with the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Mm -hmm. 
Boswell on now to kick this one away. On the return, this is Jaquiz Rogers. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that yes. wanted that. They weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive down with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as... I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Hey, move they run a draw here on second down, and at a 42-yard line here and brought down there. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, Go ahead and give it to your back. Let it pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. Hey, move on. First down, Fitzpatrick. And his throw is incomplete. He was looking for Jaquiz Rogers there. And that'll bring up second down. The touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Throwing again, Fitzpatrick. Bringing it in, Jackson left side. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Four yards on the completion and it sets up a third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Move, 45. They go play action. Fitzpatrick, blitz coming, and down he goes. T.J. Watt in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field, and they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Now Roethlisberger on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver. And it's second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. They'll run it now out of the gun. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. And the Steelers on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and nine. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And this is going to be incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh.
distance. Just a two-yard return there following a punt of 48. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Throwing on first down, Fitzpatrick. A battle for it, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Morgan Burnett. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Charles, when plays like that work, it's a thing to behold, but sometimes we see why they're very deep in the playbook. And how many times have we been at practice and heard all the other guys? And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked up by M.J. Stewart. And they'll start out with great field position at the 47-yard line in enemy territory. Well, when someone other than the quarterback is throwing the football, it's either beautiful or a disaster, and here it was the latter. Nowhere in between, right? I <laughs> think you're exactly right. It takes a fortitude to call that type of a play, but when it doesn't work, oh, boy, you wish you hadn't. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, he's having a big game through the air, and sometimes those smart decisions just dump it off. That's how you continue to have big games through the air. I agree totally. That's, that's a great analogy, a great way to put it, because he doesn't get too greedy where everything has to be pushed downfield, trying to create big plays that aren't there. You dump it off and take that nice game, and things add up, and now you have the kind of game he's having. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Set, move, 45. Right. On first and 10, Fitzpatrick. Pressure comes and the Steelers take him down. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. Fitzpatrick now on second down. It's brought in by Adam Humphreys. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. They'll wind up getting 10 back there as it'll leave them with a third and five. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. And incomplete here on third down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. And he is out of bounds, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Facing a fourth down, they come away with 18 yards and the first down conversion. Ready! Ready! And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. A gain of three, second down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Hey, move, 45! Now a second down throw for Fitzpatrick. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. 
I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Set, move, 45. Third and short yardage, Fitzpatrick. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Adam Humphreys. Five-yard touchdown, and the Bucs have taken the lead here in the fourth. And that touchdown ends a streak, for lack of a better word, of three field goals that they put on the board previously. They finally cracked the code. Yeah, they've been down there. They've been in enemy territory, as you said. They just haven't been able to punch it in until that point. So a big play coming now for the Bucs as they'll go for two. Working out of the gun, Fitzpatrick, and he's got it. So the two-point conversion is good, and they add on to their fourth-quarter lead. So that effort gives him a three-point cushion and guarantees that a field goal going forward won't beat them. Yeah, that's really good strategy because that's all you care about, not getting beat at this stage. At least give your team a fighting chance. Catton Zero out now as he'll kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver that time. And now it's second down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver, and it's third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. I don't know. He had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. Well, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know? Yeah. The mental focus. Yeah, level. that's but true. Got to stay with it. That's true. Here's Jordan Berry now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. This is brought in at the 21. That'll be a 47-yard punt, officially five on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that kicks first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Well, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, 
and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. They'll try to throw here, Fitzpatrick. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Set. Operating from the gun, Fitzpatrick. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Here's Brian Anger now. He's been terrific so far. Here's Brian Anger now, as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Vance McDonald, the tight end, was the target. That'll bring up second down. He has had a great game defensively. He's been east-west, north-south, everywhere. Yeah, and I love how you described that because to be a great defender, you have to be able to move up and back, sideline to sideline, and he's been fantastic. Reminds me of a young Charles Davis when he was playing Matt. Absolutely. Oh, wow. I thought you were going on the field, but okay, I see you. Back to throw. And McDonald here over the middle. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. He'll look to throw. And James has it. A really good pickup of 28 yards. First down now, but the clock continues to move. They'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Noah Spence in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. Back to throw. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off around the 37. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. And that one, oh, it's going to hurt big time. You're in the two-minute drill, trying to get your guys down the field, and it's looking like they're going to go up just short, as this is definitely not his best throw. And it'll wind up being intercepted. Now the Steelers put a stop to the action with a timeout defensively, as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he stopped immediately there. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game.
third down. That's Barber, and he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Now here's a whistle and a timeout. It's called by the receiving team here as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. Here's Brian Anger now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. They only need a field goal. Obviously, the clock a huge factor. They'll be watching that. What do they need to do here, Charles? Your sequence of plays has to get you out of bounds. Completions, get out of bounds, gain some yardage. Then when the clock hits seven seconds or left, now you've got a decision. Are you in field goal range, or is it Hail Mary time? Because from seven seconds down, you don't want to take a shot that you're going to have another play. We'll see how they handle it. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. He's back to throw. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And they'll get him down here at the 23. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that'll lead here to a third down. Throwing now is Roethlisberger. He's going to let it fly. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by Brent Grimes. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Bucks are winners here as we say so long from Tampa.